back in late 2010, I took my son to play rugby at the Rabina Sports Ground here. Um, in my previous video, I shared with you the observations that I made there, how bizarre they were, uh, why they stood out, and also shared with you a video from Edward Everett that he had gone out there and discovered the same thing. He had taken a politician along to find out what were these bizarre things. Now, the whole thing about these that is that does stand out is the fact that they are completely sealed off. Now, looking at the top left-hand picture here from that was the politician that Edward took out. You can see the height of the fence. It would take two people to even reach the top. You can't climb it because that's actually non-climbable mesh. So you'd need someone to actually climb up on your shoulders and reach up to the top there. And when you do reach the top there, there's actually two layers of razor wire that are actually facing in, not out. So that you're not going to encounter the problem when you get to the top. If you had some handy dandy heavy duty cutters you could actually um, cut your way through that razor wire and get in. But it's not to actually keep people from getting in, it's actually to stop people getting out because you can imagine on the inside if you got to the top you're already facing razor wire that you can't even get a grip of anything to actually cut it away so you can even start to get near the top. So it's to actually prevent people from leaving what's inside, not to protect what's inside. It's bigger security than what most prisons have. Now in the background on the right top hand side here you can actually see the stadium it's a huge sports stadium Rabina Stadium that's where uh, they play a lot of rugby and what you can't see to the right is the Rabina Hospital so this whole picture painted here with a compounded train station that in 2018, these pictures on the right here are 2018. I took them from the Clubhouse website. They took some photographs of the game one day and captured this, this in the background. So the ones on the left are what it looked like to me back then. And as you can see from the top along here, none of, a, a lot of the structure f to carry the electric trains wasn't there. There were only two carriages. I'll tell you a little bit about those as I go in on Google Earth. So, in this area here, we have the capacity now for six trains to come in to a fully enclosed compounded area that is camouflaged behind a pretty mural that can handle a population overflow that comes in from that train to take them straight over to the sports stadium or to the hospital but once those trains come in you control it it can either be a compound for quarantining or detention or what for whatever purpose it is completely sealed so once you're inside that compound you've got to let someone let you out it's not like you get on a train and you get off at the train station and you can just walk away. You've got to have permission and someone's got to give you that permission. So if you were on a train heading along the tracks and they just suddenly decided to divert into one of these stablings and close the gate behind you, there's nothing you can do. Absolutely nothing. You are sitting on the train, going to and from work or doing your own business as you have done, you know, normally do. And suddenly it's not going to your train station, it's going to this side stabling. And you don't know what's going on, nobody knows what's going on. And you're getting ordered around by people and you can't go anywhere because there's this huge fence 
there's razor wire at the top and it's got a gate just the same as what the fence is and no one's going to open it because these people are bossing you around and they are hurting you in different directions. Now if that sounds similar to something that you saw back in the Second World War, I think you should start thinking about how that could actually translate into a current reality and how people could suddenly find themselves in a situation they've got no control over. And the probability of it happening this in this COVID era with such bizarre actions from our governments over right I'm going to just say it outright it's fake nobody is really experiencing this stuff that's going on out there everything that is seen is coming to you via the internet and all digital and ultimately what I'm doing here is digital and manipulated I'm presenting an image for you to see and if I wanted to change that image and present a different story, I can manipulate it however I want to. The fact that I'm doing it honestly is something that the media don't know. What I found back in 2010 and what is there now in southeast Queensland set up is not only this station here, or stablings, sorry. If I call them stablings or stations, I'm meaning the same thing. Essentially, it's a dead end and it's closed in. You get into this. If you're on that train when it goes into that compound and one of the others, you're not getting out unless someone gives you permission. And where you get out to is where you're allowed to let, get let out to. So there are actually three other compounds like this. None of them are pretty murals like this. And it was all part of the project that was awarded in 2014 that Ranbury Pro Project Management dealt with. Now at that stage in 2014 they ordered four tracks to be put in at the stabling that is actually behind that dolphin fence. There were already two tracks that I have not been able to determine where they were authorised to come from and when those four tracks were to be put in the compound was already there so in 2014 this compound is built and as I'll show you in 2014 the other three sites mentioned were still bushland uh, oh no sorry two Banyo has uh, been there for quite some time and all they did was modify it. They made a, a very long stabling that is also covered by high security mesh and razor wire, but it's not uh, muralized and you can't really see it from the road, but I'll show you a bit what you can see from Google Earth. Now, the other two, there's three other ones other than this Rabina one, as I mentioned, the Banyo one, the Wombai one and the Ellenbar one. Now, as I said, the Ellenbar and the Wombai ones were actually bush before 2014. So these were built specifically by Ranbury to these compound style designs. Now, most prisons or detention camps or military complexes are not protected by this level of security and it is they are all basically designed the same way and you can see not from google earth but from radbury they actually showed pictures of banyo wombai and ilambar finished compounds and they a noticeable emittance of their best work and prettiest work was the rubina one they didn't show us any of the rubina one now, one would have to think too that the process of actually making that mesh, uh, it's powder coated and dipped and all that sort of stuff, it's very costly. Now to actually create that design on there, to actually camouflage it, was very deliberate and it was actually done before the sports ground was actually set up, before 
it was even set up for um, the community to come in and play sports there. So when people first came in to the clubhouse, the Rubina Raptors, that dolphin mural was already up. It wasn't in construction, it had been purpose built to actually camouflage what was behind it. And I suppose to also detract from the fact that it had all that razor wire. I mean, it, you can't help but think that it's odd. It is deliberately obscured from what it is. It's a high security fence that's designed to keep things in. And it's not designed to protect the trains. It's designed to stop what comes in on the trains getting out of it. That's a complex. It's a compound for quarantine, detention, for whatever thing that the government might decide is necessary. Now, this is in Queensland. It's not quite as bad as what Victoria is right now, and I haven't even looked at it in Victoria, but I dare say that there's probably been compounds that have been built like this, and I'll, as I'll show you a little bit further on with Google Earth, that pretty much the four stablings compounds that have been built cover the whole Sunshine Coast to Brisbane to the Gold Coast. So that's pretty much the whole of southeast Queensland and the majority of the population in that area. They can all be controlled and diverted to any number of these four dead end stations, uh, stablings, herded off the train into the stadium behind and the train sent back out to pick up people again at the train stations thinking they're just going on their normal about business going home. Now do you think this is a possibility? This is a possibility that could happen. The government has done such bizarre, strange things since the beginning of this year that one can only begin to wonder what they are actually capable of. So if you think that when you're getting on one of those trains that you're going to end up where you want to be, consider that in 2020 it's where the government wants you to be. It's not your choice anymore. This is The Hunger Games 2020. It's just tightening the reins at the moment. Everything's in place to do that. So I'll leave it at that and I'll take you over to Google Earth now and we'll have a look first at the largest southeast Queensland area, then at the sites themselves. This is Queensland. The whole of Australia is connected by rail. There is the state rail and then there's the intrastate rail that will go anywhere and everywhere all across Australia and they all connect up to one another. The rail infrastructure in Australia is not only owned by the Queensland and state governments, respective state or territory governments, but also Commonwealth Rail that is coordinated with the state rail. Now on top of those two rail systems, the government control, there's also another aspect that the government control and that's the railway system that feeds in and out of many of the mine sites throughout Australia there is a huge infrastructure in play. The rail infrastructure that we have in Australia includes more than just the government rail. That the railway structure in Australia is many tiered and after realising too the private rail that, well I think the, the governments actually pay for the rail because they want the exports for the GDP or whatever they you know they classify it as so basically the rail was infrastructure that I'm pretty sure that the government pays for but um, I don't know who maintains it but anyway these are also direct links into places where now this sounds terribly morbid but 
if I was a sick psycho government that had killed a heap of people and I wanted to get rid of them without any notice, I could actually just stick them on a train to a mine site and stick them in an open pit and get a digger to put some backfill over the top. Nobody would be any of the wiser. And they're isolated, nobody goes to these places and even if you could get to the fence line of the mine site, you're not going to get into the actual mine site because all this is protected. Now mind you, it's not as protected as what it is. My ex went to Irian Jaya and now they would have armed soldiers actually parading around on the mine site to ensure that no civilians broke in and caused unrest. Now, <laughs> after just saying that, it's actually a possibility that could happen here in Australia with what I'm about to show you that anyone could be taken into a dead-end compound where there are armed people ordering you around and telling you what to do. But anyway, that's the overall set out of rail in Australia. Now, this is southeast Queensland. As you can see from all the little red dots, I've got four stablings marked that cover from the Sunshine Coast down to the Gold Coast and just below the Gold Coast down here at Coolangatta you can actually see the border crossing. So that's Queensland, that side, New South Wales, the other side. And I've also got on here marked Dara and Walkaraka because Walkaraka was actually purpose built for the trains that these stablings were actually created to cater for. Uh, that's the main depot. As you can see, that is right inland. <laughs> it, uh, now you can see all the housing there. I want you to realise that there's the bulk of your population in Queensland, right there. And any that aren't in that area, that are inland, there's the inland train that comes through here. And there's also the one that comes f from further north of Queensland that comes down through the Sunshine Coast. and So the whole east coast of Australia is linked up. Even though the four stablings that I'm about to show you on the Queensland rail line in shortly after the Rabina stabling and the Varsity Lake station, the trains come to a dead end because that is purely the Queensland rail line. The, that does actually, as I s explained before, it does hook up, all of them hook up to overlanders, inlanders, interstaters, all round the places. So it's all interlinked, it just takes step by step to get there. Now before I zoom in and show you these four stablings, I have to understand that the way I'm looking at this now, I wasn't before, a couple of days ago, I didn't even see the, uh, the worry about the, even the one in Rabina, but after looking at, well, what's going on now and finding out more about the trains, the train tracks, the compound stablings that have been purpose-built for uh, something that is really unnecessary. Now, as you can see, the Wumbai and the Ellenbar ones, these are pretty remote locations. You're not going to have a very large population that is in the area to begin with let alone a risk of a population that's actually going to come in and go, oh, I'm going to jump the fence and paint the trains. I mean, it, it's ridiculous. As I said, there's heavier security at military... Um, military complexes have less security, sorry, than what is in these compounds. And they are compounds. They are fully closed off, high security mesh wire with razor wire, they are security compounds and they are designed to keep things in, not out. So if you were designing these compounds to stop people jumping the fence and attacking your trains and defacing them or perhaps a terrorist might jump over the fence and sabotage them and cause a derailment or whatever, it's not something that they're protecting it from. They're actually designing the security so that whatever they take in there can't get out. 
As I mentioned before, the Rabina stabling is the only one that Ranbury didn't give photographs of, and yet it's the prettiest. And I can understand why, because Wumbai, it's in the middle of nowhere. Ellenbar is in the middle of nowhere. Banyo, again, not really in anywhere. Now you get down to Rabina and it's starting to get into a heavily populated area but it's got things that all of the other compounds don't have. It's got a stadium and a hospital. Now let's just go in and have a look. So this is uh, the zoomed in area of Rabina. As you can see here the Rabina stabling is marked. That's the one where the dolphins are behind, that's called the West Stabling. And the other one over here, the Standard East stab Stabling, has been there for a long time. And that does not have a compound around it. It isn't even fenced, gated off. I mean, the trains can come in and out. If you actually came in there on a train and you jumped off, you could quite easily walk out. There's nothing holding you back. The one on the left, on the other hand, that's nasty. So here is the hospital, the Rabina Hospital. It was a, originally a private hospital, but the government bought it out in 2002, and then it did major um, expansion to it, millions and millions of dollars expansion. Now over here, as uh, next to the hospital, there's the Rabina train station. That's all car parking there. Now over here in Promethean Way, yes, if anybody knows mythology, you'll know who Prometheus is, and it's a pretty strange name to actually call the street. But anyway, it's called Promethean Way, and if I take you down there, what you'd... No, I won't dilly-dally. If I took you down there, you'd actually see that that's the Bond Institute for Health and Sports. Now, this Rabina Hospital is also sponsored and has housing facilities for Bond and Griffith University. So it's a major teaching hospital, and it's got connections to both Bond and Griffin, Griffith sorry, University. Two th Now this stadium was built to hold 25,000 people but during construction they found another 2,500 seats. I don't know how they found that but yes they found extra seats. So just imagine here a hypothetical scenario where this is the major train line down through the centre here. You've got stablings on either side. Now, what if a government decided with a state in quarantine and citizens that weren't cooperating with what they were supposed to do in quarantine and there were also people that had been found to be infected and they needed to quarantine them. I mean, imagine some kind of scenario. It's not that hard to imagine given what's been going on in Australia since the beginning of the year. So you've been brought in by the train and they offload you, take you over and 25,000 people and if there are sick they can be picked up straight by an ambulance that would come in here directly from the teaching hospital and pick them up directly and take them off or they could actually set up a an overhead tunnel thing like they do in quarantine where they herd you from there up through there or into the entrance. Now this uh, main uh, electricity thing here, they're set up for each of the uh, st stabling areas. Every one of those stabling areas has these pretty powerful electric ones. So it stands to reason they are electric trains and they need a fairly big electric supply. So the, the Rabina setup is a little bit different to all the other compounds or stablings, is what they want to call them, 
where it does have the huge stadium, the hospital, the training teaching hospital. It's got two universities set up near it. So who knows what they might be wanting to experiment on. And one thing that I haven't pointed out here is that around the oval here, this line here, that's a muddy brown river. Over here you've got a major highway. And when you look at the whole area, let's zoom it out a little bit, as you can see, that river actually cuts it all the way off to here. So if you wanted to control something that came in to that stabling, all you have to do is control this small little area here. And you can keep anything that has been bought in there. Now there are obvious issues about, well, <laughs> you can just jump the fence and swim across and escape. But first of all, you can't escape. You can't get past that right razor wire. And if they're going to be putting you in there, I dare say there's going to be people with uh, guns that will might might take a pot shot at you if you try and escape anyway. So and just a guess, but so if you just say for example you did make it over into the water, well at that stage who knows what they might have stuck in the water that they can put obstacles in the river, and it's money. Who knows how much is already in there. If that had razor wire hidden underneath it, I wouldn't like to try and dive into that and swim across. That would soon send you into a bloody mess. Which, if they're going to stick it round the compound, why not stick it in the water? Because they are clearly trying to compound certain areas off. And this Rabina stabling, as I said, has been deliberately excluded from any photographs from the Rambury uh, website where they're bragging about their work and showing what a magnificent job they've done yet their most colourful and wonderful um, production they don't say boo about because it is deliberately designed to actually conceal the true nature of what it is and it was actually built before the contract was awarded to Rambury in 2014 but if you look a little bit further back, it was actually Ranbury that built the one that I saw and compounded it in the first place. So Ranbury project management that have been responsible for the construction of the four stablings and the initial two-line stabling compound behind the dolphin mural uh, all comes from the same project management team and the same mindset and design and aim in mind. And overall, it probably was part of something that was started 20 years ago as part of a huge southeast Queensland infrastructure upgrade, which um, involved uh, the Durra Line, which has still been upgraded today. And that's why I marked it on the on the larger map because Dara is central between the four stablings and the Wolkakura uh, depot. It could be seen as a stopover point before you get to the the main depot. Now, the one thing I did notice that the depot does not have the high security compound mesh and razor wire it's actually got the kind of security you would expect to find around all of these other stablings. Let's move on what I want to do now is just take you through each site so that you can see what it looked like uh, right now we're looking at an image that came from 2016 but I can bring up through historical data the previous images and zoom in on the stabling area and let's just get rid of that little red thing in the way so this is what it looks like when you look at it closely as you can see there's a stadium down the bottom there that's the east stabling and this is the west stabling where there are supposed to be four tracks not six. 
that's the um, Rabina Raptors Clubhouse. So we'll just bring up the historical images here. Well, as you can see, the historical image is 2017, which is a year after the previous one. Now, it's pretty blurry. The thing I can't imagine, too, with Google Earth is how many satellites have we got around the Earth and they can't take a decent photograph? There are even ones that are going back in the archive that it's a picture of cloud. Are you serious? You're going to take a picture of cloud? Sorry, but it is actually finished, as you can see there. Even though it's blurry, you can see that all the lines, the train lines are complete. And it's fully functioning and operational. Uh, the photographs I showed you before in 2018 show that there are at least four trains lined up in that train station when they're playing rugby on that field. Now if you go down here to the little white building in the complex, you can see here this is the gates where they open and shut and with a high security mesh. Now I'll just take you back to the most or the oldest one we've got. Two thousand and three. Very overexposed image. But you can see there that that's where the um, stadium's going to be. There's the stabling, the east stabling. It's got a train in there. Plenty of car parking. Now one thing I'm going to say about car parking is that Edward said in his video that there's no car parking around the stadiums worldwide where these things are and it's a common thing. Well. That doesn't actually make any sense to me because stadiums usually have lots of car park because they're designed for thousands and thousands of people to show up. So they need somewhere to park. And for those that aren't driving there, yes, they are usually near a train or a bus line that can bring them in, but usually a train because a train can carry a lot more people than a bus. And the train lines are separate to... Uh, the main traffic so they're not going to clog up traffic so that's just a thing on car park because if you notice here a large part of this is still car park it's car park over oh sorry that's not car park that's all the electrics set up for the stabling and for that's the Rabina train station that's set up for the trains not necessarily the hospital but you can see all the the car parking for the hospital as well. There will be more over here. This is how you got into the rugby field that will come in the future. There's the road down here that doesn't exist yet. So still in 2004 you can see that the for a start the oval's a lot bigger. The tree line goes all the way around and that little that little area that's now attached to the compound is there, but nothing to do with the current compound is there. So we'll just go on to the next one. All right. So this is in 2008. They've clearly started constructing what I saw in 2010. The first two tracks now this construction had to be for the first two tracks because this is 2008. The contract for doing four more had not been awarded, well will not be awarded for another six years. So whoever started this construction, which Ranbury were in charge of, were building it to compound specifications for two lines in on a singular track. And you can see that as you go through the images. But mind you, the images get pretty bad after here. You can see that this is 2009. It, there's no fence line up yet. Now, 
this is an interesting one because it went from 2009 to 2011 so I can't show you what I saw in 2010 but by 2011 this is a completed compound this is actually what I did look at late 2010 as you can see there are two lines along here I came in from the top end along this path here there's all the murals along here with all the dolphins and as you walk along I looked up here there's long weeds and grass growing up you could see the the prettier mural on the concrete base of it below the mesh and the top mesh was the same dolphins jumping in and out of the water and the razor wire at top now I looked in and all I could see was one train track and what I thought was a platform or a station but looking at this now I it clearly must have had a train sitting in there because I could not see two train lines only one so in they'd already had one train in there by the time I had looked at it anyway even though well it could have been who knows if they do make uh, transportable mobile train station platforms so that's 2011 and as you go further through you can see that there are two trains in there in 2012 none in that one none in that one all right that's got some in it now you get the um, picture that oh, there are only two lines so I'll take it through to the first one where they start constructing the other lines okay this is a 2015 image just before they started doing work on the um, project that was awarded in 2014 to construct the new lines but this is just before construction so let's flash it through to the next one which is 2016 as you can see here in March 2016 they've started work on the uh, rest of the lines Now we're going to have a look at the other sites now, quickly I hope, because this is taking longer to explain and I have got a little bit sidetracked, sorry about that. It actually shows the front gate, how the front gate is set up with the security mesh and the razor wire at top, so that you can actually see that all of these compounds are built the same, uh, to the same specifications, clearly by Ranbury, who designed well, they like to design compounds. This is the uh, Banyo Stabling in 2017. As you can see, its compound has been completed. Here we go. Uh, we'll follow the mouse here, all the way down along here and all the way up there. It's actually a lot longer than the others where the others are designed to take four next to each other these ones actually must take one in behind each other so that they take four that way the trains themselves are a hundred and forty three meters long I think so at minimum the tracks have to be a hundred and forty three meters long this one when I measured it with Google Earth it was 200 and something uh, it was very long it was clear that uh, house 4 there you had to have two back to back side by side so if I take you down to street view here I'll take you down here where the little cars are because this will show you what kind of railing they give you fencing for now you probably can't see it too well, oh yes here we go, 
I picked the right spot. Now you see these trailers here? You might not notice it very well because there's another line of security fencing along the back here. That's the kind of normal security fencing you'd expect to find around stablings. Your, your fence with your three layers of wire. And again, they're facing out, I mean, in, not out. That's a bit strange. So you can't actually see here very well, but here's the fence line. You're driving down the road, you can pull over and stop here. When I said if you're an adult, you can lift your leg and jump the fence, that's the height of the fence there. All right, you'd have to be a pretty tall human to do that, but you get my point anyway. You could easily just run up someone's trailer that they've left out there and jump over onto them. You know, live trains run along that track. That's the kind of protection that they give you to protect you from getting run over from a train. But they give their trains all this security. That's what I'm talking about, but it seems strange. So as you can see, this is a long street that covers the full length. Alright, so I realise as I'm going along here looking for uh, the entrance to the gate, I'm not going to find it because the image data is 2015, so they're not showing me current images where I can actually see the gate. So that's interesting. So that's just a little overview of Banyo. Let's go to Ellenbar next. This is the Allenbar stabling. Now because that's only a recent construct, I'll bring up the historical data and show you what it looked like. Right, let's go back to let's just go back to 2012. As you can see in 2012, there's nothing there. Maybe the starts of Drive, um, clearing the land to come in to construct. But let's bring it forward a little bit. 2014, still nothing there. 2015. Two thousand and sixteen construction had started which seems pretty much in line with the other stablings. Just flick through there because they don't really change too much until, yes, here we go. This is more like the lines have got in. You can see that there's a lot of uh, the overhead electrics in there for them. And that looks Pretty close to finish 2016. The front gate still isn't been put hasn't been put on until 2017. This is February 2017. You can see that the front gate is on and all the uh, stablings are finished. So that looks like it's finished by February 2017. Let's take that back to the 2017 shows that, yes, there's the fence there. It's got one track coming in. Now let's go to street level and see if we can see through the trees. Yes, there's the front gate. As you can see there, the that gate opens up, the trains go in, the gate shuts. If you're on that train, you don't get out unless someone opens that door for you. It, there's no decorations on these. You can see that it's got the double layered uh, razor wire. It's got the security mesh. It is the same kind of compound that was... Um, at Rabina. 
so that's the Ellen Bow. Uh, oops, let's turn that around. That's the Ellen Bow compound. Now we'll go and have a look at the uh, one by one. This is the one by stabling. Now the image that you're looking at here at again is 2017. So there's no current image data and unlike most of the other places where you can get down to road level and have a look, this is completely isolated from the road. You can't get in there. This is actually the train track coming around here and that train track is all part of, as you can see back here, that would divert off into there. There's no road, public road, that you can actually get into there and anyone that actually works there, I dare say that there's a fence probably down here or somewhere to get in. But this one was a slightly different construct because uh, these buildings here were part of the construction. And you could tell that because all of this road was built in to up here before construction. There was a office built here that later disappeared and it left just this stabling and these buildings. Now this guy over here in his house is a road that runs along here that this one ran off. Uh, no, yes there it is, uh, it crosses the, the train track there. So it would have been easy for them to come in, con construct the office and bring everything in that way. We'll bring up the historical data on this. As you can see, there's nothing there in 2010. Absolutely nothing. In 2011, there's still nothing. Uh, this next image, I'm pretty sure, is when the one's built. Yes, as you can see here, they've built some kind of a construction site, sheds. There's roads coming in now, and they're getting ready to start building. And that's already in 2012 in Mumbai. This is the first startings here in 2015, October, yes, uh, where you can see they've cleared away what is going to be the office. So in 2015, they've clearly got the contract and the office is built. Now this is 2016, January. The office is built. The site has been cleared partially, ready for construction. Obviously clouds over there that day, but you can see then in 2016 the construction's underway. That's a better image. So let's zoom in a little bit. So there's only one access really into this place and it's fairly well right at the very top end of the Sunshine Coast. The bulkier population is further south so one would think that if I was going to use these stabling as compounds to bring people in and usher them off to somewhere else, this stabling would be used to bring all those in from the north of Queensland, bring them down further to probably the Rubina one, which has all the access to the facilities. So all these other stablings would be gathering points to take it to a main point. Well, that's the theory anyway that I've come up with. People can agree or disagree, or maybe one day you might find out that you don't need a crystal ball, just <laughs> common sense. So I'll just flick through a few more of these till it shows. The 
just bring it up a bit further. You don't need to. As you can see here, let's take it back one. Yeah, there's always a cloud photo before they change something. I don't know why. It's almost like get ready. Because get ready, here's the office down here with this image in July, um, not July, February 2017. And we move on to the next image. We've got a cloud image. And the next image, say goodbye to the office. So that was the construction office. These construction sheds, they are still there. They weren't removed, but the construction office is gone, clearly indicating that by July 2017, this had been completed. Now I will show you pictures that uh, Rambury posted of their finished sites of Wombai, Banyo, and Ellenbar, and you can see that they are all compounds they all have mesh fences, they all have double security uh, razor wire. There is no reason to actually build these facilities with such an extreme security measure. And let's go, well, let's get a better image back for a start so you can see. Because you have to see that, all right, look at how much bush is surrounding that. We are not in a highly uh, suburbanised area. Yes, there are suburbs around, but those suburbs are small. It's not like uh, the level of population where, see over here, on the Sunshine Coast, the density of population from the Sunshine Coast all the way down. I'll just show you quickly the Walkakura uh, depot where all the trains are coming in, uh, the new NGR. As you can see here from the image in 2018, there's a lot of trains already in. You can see on the left hand side of the screen here, you've got trains coming in from the west, and you've uh, that one's on the main line and another one's coming into the depot and at a closer look at the depot you can see that the east and west sides are segregated in the front here there's a line where you could swap over that if you came in from the west that you could come out on the east side but the uh, in here you're coming in you're not going out in here you're coming in um, not going out and when I say not going out I mean not out the other side you're you'd come in to this here and then you'd come out and go back down that line again or you would come out a little bit down here switch over and then come across through that track and up on to there and head out to the west so west or east it doesn't really matter. You can get there either way. Now I did have a little bit of a look. You can see down here the main entrance. There's a uh, security gate. Doesn't look like it's got mesh like the other ones. It's not very boarded like the other ones. There's no public access road so you can't get down and have a look at street level. And over here you've got uh, the electricity that supplies all of their um, trains that they have with those things. As I said, from here you can go east or west. So that central point, let's bring it out a bit here. You can see that uh, where it is, where the hand, little hand is, where it is in relation to the other stablings that I've showed you. Now if you keep going out west you'll get to Toowoomba and then if you keep going out you're going to end up in the desert. So I'll just take you in here just to give you a little bit of an overview what it looked like. I will take the best of stroke off those. Back in 2003 there's nothing there. Looks like something has been done there but uh, what I don't know. 
It's not until 2016 that we actually find that the station's finished and it's been used. You can see a train in there. So that's all I'll tell you about those. I'll just uh, lead in to the end with showing a bit about the projects that were involved and the project manager and the trains, just so you can get an overview. These are the new trains that all the stablings and the depot have been built for, 75 new trains. Now in the few slides that will follow you can pause and read them if you want. It's a little bit about the trains, the new generation Rolling Stone. There was a little bit of a problem with the uh, manufacturer meeting the design plan and it ended up costing something like $336 million to refit them all to make them compliant and essentially it was over uh, 12 mil in uh, the disabled toilet and the seats were too close together for a wheelchair in certain places to get through so they decided to refit all 75 with two toilets now considering that each of these 75 new trains is six carriages long and permanently attached as six carriages it would make sense to actually have two toilets on the carriages especially on jo long journeys and fully packed with people so very shortly I'm just going to let these slides play and you can stop and read them it shows uh, the uh, Vanbury, the project manager, uh, uh, their involvement in the first instance where I believe that the uh, dolphin compound at Rabina was built, which ended in 2011, which was probably the first stage of this ma major infrastructure project and expansion. Then I've just included some uh, PDFs that I actually got from Queensland Rail about their stabling sites. The first image I give is the one that they gave and in the second one I provide the other image that Rambury showed of that site once they had constructed it. So I'm going to start this up. It will flick through rather quickly so as I said if you want to read what's on there you better pause it. So here we are back at the Rabina stabling and the high security compound sitting next to a major stadium, a hospital and it's got all the earmarks of something that really 
you don't want to consider the possibility. Is this a one-way trip for a lot of people somewhere down the line? It is something that you have to ask yourself. Yesterday they just closed down the Queensland borders and everything is just going crazy. Victoria, well, there's stories coming out of there that there are Chinese coming in to install biometric system in Victoria. I mean, anyone that's actually been watching Victoria will know they're a test case. They're going to tweak anything and everything and apply it broad blanket across Australia and the world. Each country is going to be doing it a little bit differently, but each country is doing it. And that has to indicate a common goal, a common intelligence, a common mindset that's behind it. And I don't care what you call it, New World Order or <laughs> what other name. Our government doesn't work for us. They don't swear allegiance to us. Our constitution isn't even about us. It's actually about how we get our rights listened to under a monarchy. It basically separates the monarch from having to deal with our day-to-day -day problems on a day-to-day -day basis that politicians are now the governing body that is set up as the go-between. You can't go and petition the Queen directly and the only people that even get close to her are private secretaries. The Governor-General in Australia would very rarely get near her. Even the communications of the Governor-General in Australia are done through her private secretary, not through her directly, even though everything is done only with the Queen's consent, because the Queen's not going to write her own damn letters, is she? She's, she's too lazy for that. Anyway, so that's brought that all to an end. Uh, I think people should actually consider, if you are in Australia or even anywhere else in the world, Take a look around and have a look at not just the train stations, but the stablings. Because it's if they've been compounded in other states like they have in Queensland or in, in other countries, you've got a scenario set up here where you can quite easily divert people into a dead-end compound they can't get out of and you can take charge over what happens to them. Now, if you thought that couldn't have happened a year ago, you probably would have called me a conspiracy theorist for even suggesting it. But today, you might actually call me more of a realist, and I think that it's a lot more people actually... We should start looking at the realism of what is down the track. You can't just think that things are going to go back to normal. There is no normal that we're going back to. There is only the unknown that we are paving each day. And a lot of that paving is being done by our politicians. We are letting them do anything and everything. Are we going to do anything or are we just going to sit back and wait for them to end up sticking us into these compounds and then going, well, why didn't we know? Well, the thing is that all the signs are there and so many people are already realising this. Maybe it's time to wake up your neighbours. If you're awake and watching this, it's time to wake up your neighbours. Because as I've heard others said and as anyone knows, it's not going to be those that are awake that drag us down. It's going to be those that are still sleeping. I went out yesterday and oh, I nearly had an argument with someone because I made a comment about I'm not a sheep or you know behaving like good little sheep and I was being a little bit sarcastic and any any idiot could have picked up on that and she turned around and said as we do and I looked at her and she was dead serious and I oh I had to hold back from saying something because mmm Let's just say the people around actually kind of gathered that I was less impressed with that response because I went, hmm. And I looked around and people were looking at me as if to say, is she going to say, 
thinking, is she going to say anything? But I thought, no. When you've got sheep, they don't know they're sheep. And as this lady said, as you do. Now, what do you do with some, um, someone like that, with that kind of mentality that says, as you do? Um, well, I'm sorry, I'm not a sheep. I don't bar. I'm more a a wolf or a, a dog. I'm going to bark. I'm not going to sit down and be compliant and, and follow everybody and do as you're told. Thank you very much. I've never been that way. I've always been the black sheep. So I suppose you could say I've been the cons conspiracy theorist of the family right from the word go. But then a lot of those things that I actually have discovered through life have not been because of theories. They've actually been through real life experience. But I'll save all of that and everything else for another video. For now, I'll say see you later.